Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today we're going to continue on from our last uh, screencast on file sharing. And what I want to talk about today is now that we have set up our AFP shares and we've set up our shared folders and the things that we want other people to have access on from our server, how do we get a hold of those uh, folders and things that we've set up? So how do we do that locally within our network and not only that but how do we do it externally outside our network so that what happens is we have access to those things. The benefit of a server is to be able to access your files and things while you're on the road and to be able to access them from any computer on your network and that's the reason why we set those things up in the first place. So I thought I would do a screencast to show you how to do that and also how to auto mount some of those things to make those things uh, happen and get them set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm on uh, one of my uh, remote computers right now. So what I want to do is show you first what I did on my server to get started so you have a little bit of background and then I'll talk you through it. So this is a screen share with the main screen of my server. And what you'll notice on here is under my file sharing uh, area here, I've set up a folder called databases. And so what I want to do is I want to be able to access those uh, databases and I want, my, uh, I want my wife to be able to access it and myself to be able to access it but nobody else. So what I want to show you here is when you go to the settings on it and I'm just going to say edit share points here so that it will pop up and what I did in my preference area here in my access area is I've got my wife and myself have read and write access everybody else has no access so that that way only she and I can access this particular folder because I don't want my kids to get into it and mess it up and all of that. So that's how I've set that up on the main server so that you can see how we have that rolling. So let me just put this down here for a second. And what I want to show you first of all is that the access controls and things work. So I've got another screen share going here of my son's computer. And uh, if you look at his computer here, I've got him connected to the server. And you'll notice it has all his other folders and things on there but you'll notice that the database folder does not show up and that's good because I haven't given him any access to that folder so as far as he's concerned that folder doesn't even exist on my server so while he's logged into his account he can't even touch it and so it's a great way for you to be able to protect folders on your network from certain users so that you don't have to worry about them getting into them especially if you have kids uh, you could do it with all kinds of things if you had a secret folder that uh, that you and your wife were using for Christmas gifts or something and you didn't want your kids to access it. You could do it that way so they have no access when they're logged in as themselves. They won't even see it. They won't even know that it's there. So it's kind of neat. You can have some secret folders there and you can keep your kids and everybody away from it. But I wanted to show you that the access controls do actually work. Okay, so I want to be able to access those folders and so it's pretty simple to do. All you've got to do is pull up a finder window. So what I'm going to do is just kind of double click over here on my on my inbox and uh, if you look here uh, on the server, a couple of ways I can get there. If I have credentials to get into the server, I can do a connect as over here, let it load, and uh, what it'll do is once it's loaded, it'll come up with all of my different folders that I have available to me, and you'll notice databases is right there, and then I can get into the databases, I can use them, and all of that. That's a convenient way, uh, but another way is I might want it to be mounted as a drive so that I can see it there so that it's always uh, available to me. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come out of here, and I'm going to go up to the finder menu and where it says go here you just say go and connect to server and it'll bring up this dialog where you can connect to your server now what you want to do is you want to put in AFP because that is the share that we're doing you'll put a colon there with two backslashes and then you can just put in your server name and it will show you all of the shares you have available if you want to get specific and only have one show up and all that kind of stuff uh, you can go ahead and put all the uh, the file path in here and add all of those things in uh, but for our purposes it's just simplest to put in your server credentials and then it goes and goes out to connect to the server and now that it's done that it shows me now all of the things I have available to me um, because of my my login credentials because I have admin credentials and you can see my database folder so I'm gonna say that's the one I want to mount and so it goes out and it mounts it you can see it here on my desktop and you can see it here on the side as well where it's mounted it for me it also shows me the the file path so that if I wanted to specifically get to it I could do that but now it's all set up for me and ready to go uh, and it'll also show up here. Um, it'll show up here on my desktop, and it'll show up here in this area. Now, 
The problem is now that's that's great and everything, but to go through that every single time I want to log in is kind of a pain in the neck, right? Because I want to have access to those databases all the time. I want my wife to be able to have access to it. And frankly, she's not as technical as I am to be able to make these things happen. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to set it up in such a way that it will automatically mount every time I log in. So if you come up to System Preferences and you open up the System Preference pane, I'm going to show you how we can get this particular folder to auto mount so we don't have to worry about it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into Users and Groups in System Preferences. And what you're going to need to do is authenticate uh, on your uh, user ID there. Okay, so now I've unlocked it. So you can see that it's unlocked. And you see this item up here that says Login Items. You want to make sure you're on your admin account. You're on your main account there. You go into Login Items. And these are all of the different things that will start at Login. All I need to do is take this folder over here off the desktop, drag it into the Login Items area. Okay. And now what it's going to do is it's added it here. See that right there? So now what's happened is, is it's actually going to show this. Every time I log in now, it will automatically um, load uh, the, and connect to this particular AFP share. It'll show up here on my desktop. It'll show up in my finder. And now I've got the drive accessible and ready to go every time I log now, in. Now one more thing I want to cover is how to connect to your AFP uh, drives remotely. So when you're outside your network, you're not inside your network where everything is already connected and working, how do you actually now connect to those shares and can you do it from a remote location? Now you can do that, but there's a couple of things that you need to make sure are in place. And the process is pretty much the same as what we went over here. But there's a couple of things you need to check. What I'm going to do is go back to my screen share on my server here. And uh, one of the things you want to check right away is you got to make sure that the ports on your router are open to allow for file sharing to happen. Uh, I found that sometimes what will happen is server will not uh, automatically open up the ports. It will create the ability for those ports to be there, but it won't automatically open those ports even when you turn the service on. Uh, I'm not sure why it does that, uh, and I don't know what the, the technical pieces are, because when you go into the actual uh, server application, there really is no place on there to uh, open that service. And so you actually need to probably go into your router manually to set this up. So if you go into your airport utility, as you can see we have here, and you find your router, and you go to the network tab here, as you can see, uh, down below, here are all of our port mappings that we talked about before uh, when I did the uh, actual screencast on uh, doing port forwarding. If you scroll down through this list of ports that should be open there, you'll notice in my list at the very bottom here it says file sharing service, right? It says that right there, AFP, SMB. And so what you want to make sure is that there's a check mark uh, next to that service so that what happens is it opens up uh, the server to make it happen. All right, so if those ports are not open, then you will not be able to access your server uh, remotely through AFP, through your file shares. So you need to make sure that those things are open in order for you to have the shares work. Once you have done that, though, and once you're back into your, uh, your uh, at Mac, let's say you're at a remote location, all you've got to do is go through the exact same process that I had set up for you before, right? You, say, you go down to the Go uh, Connect to Server, you type in the server credentials like I told you before, you click Connect, and it brings you right up to the different uh, shares and things that you have available to connect to. And so that happens outside the network as well. Uh, a couple things to remember is it will take a little bit longer to connect to those shares because you're going over the internet and through uh, all the traffic and stuff there. I found when I'm offsite it takes a lot longer. If you're not patient, you may feel like, oh, it's not ever going to connect. Uh, give yourself several minutes uh, for that thing to connect. Just let it run for a while to make sure. Uh, I found myself that, that that was the case. It took longer. I kept trying it thinking something was wrong. But the reality is it does take longer when you're connecting to it remotely. But the great thing is, is when you do that, now you have access to those files. So you can do it on the road as well. And and, uh, and it's, it's great to be able to have those file shares to make that happen. Okay, well, that's all I have for today on file sharing. Uh, that's the second part of that series. I'll come back at you with a, uh, another screencast on Lion Server. Uh, if you can remember, you're on YouTube. If you can favorite uh, these videos as much as possible, uh, I know that sends them up on the charts a little bit so that other people can see them, so that those who need help don't have to hunt so hard to find them. And uh, again, thank you for listening. I'll be back with you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.